Rodia, and welcome to another brand new episode of Subbury.com's Person of Interest. Now, if you haven't seen the show before, let me tell you what it's all about. All right? The idea is very simple. Each episode, we're going to meet an interesting Sudbarian. It might be somebody you already know, or it might be a complete stranger, but it will be one of the many, many people in our community who has a story that's just begging to be told. So today, we are here on Kathleen Street in the Donovan. Now, the Donovan has a bit of a reputation, right, with crime, drugs, things like that. It's the kind of place where person of interest might mean something completely different than what we're talking about today. But if you actually come down here, it's really not like that at all. And one of the big reasons for that is that there are a lot of really funky businesses on this strip. Now, we're going to sit down today with Mark Browning. He's a musician but he's now a business owner and he owns three of these businesses on this one block right here which he has kind of single-handedly transformed into a little mini Brooklyn. So let's sit down with Mark and figure out how he did it. Take a look. All right, so we're on Kathleen right mm -hmm. here, and this is kind of, I guess, the triangle. Yeah, I suppose, right? yeah. So we have Tuco's right here, right. and then across the street we have Beards, and then this funky polka dot, the, dots, polka, dot building, the yeah. polka dot building is going to be a vegan ice cream Just the shop. first the first window in the bottom left there, okay. that's the ice cream hole. And then Cosmic Dave's yeah. final emporium. That's right. And it's all just like in this one yeah. block. I mean, you must really kind of walk a lot of miles just bouncing across <laughs> yeah. from all of these yeah, various places. I do. Yeah. I have to tell you, I used to I used to live in this neighborhood about 10 years ago, 15 years ago. You know, at least for me and, and for other people in this neighborhood, at that time, even just walking down the street was something that you maybe thought twice about. <laughs> Um, really? Yeah, I don't know. It's. I mean, I'm not. I'm, I don't think I'm being overly dramatic, but it's. It's. You know, this neighborhood does have a bit of a reputation around the city. Sure. And and if you come down here and you look, um, it's nothing like what 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 people might say about it. It's. Uh, it's really vibrant. It's really mm -hmm. kind of flourishing. And I think a large part of that is is this little triangle, right here. I've been here uh, with my wife for 12 years, 12 or 13 years I think we've been here, which is why I was laughing when you sure, said Sure, yeah. Because I, I remember, I mean I was here then too, and yeah. I, I guess I never really, never worried about it sure. when I walked around. It, it used to be a different neighborhood, like it, it's had its mm -hmm. dark times before, but I think that those times were sort of passed by the time I got here. I think the sure. reputation has... Um, has lasted longer than the actual reality of mm -hmm. what it's like in the mm -hmm. Donovan, which I kind of like. Yeah, <laughs> I you like, like that. You like the kind of edge like of the that. neighborhood. Yeah, it's like it's yeah, got a bit of a. This is the Donovan, you know. Don't mess with. Yeah, it. sure. I don't know if I should be saying this in an interview, but it's the, it's it's kind of nice to live in a neighborhood where you can sit on your front stoop of your record store and have a beer. Sure. You know, no yeah. one's going to mess with you. No, it's kind of nice. Like I mean, that was a KFC. I know. Uh, when I know. we were when when I opened, that was a a, a running uh, KFC. Used to drive us crazy because the smell. The smell, the meat. I can imagine. Yeah. Right. So and is there is there a certain irony then, like you know, opening up a, a vegan taco restaurant in what used to be a KFC, sure. like the greasiest, yeah. meatiest, grossest chicken on yeah. the planet? Yeah. There <laughs> certainly is. Uh, was it, there a little moment of kind of triumph there for there you? There was like a, a number of moments. <laughs> um, I mean, even now, some of the shelves in the basement are the same shelves that they used. Really? And their labels are still on the shelves. They're just old wood shelves, right? And, yeah. they'll, and it'll say what, what was on the shelf before, right? Sure. Is chicken this, chicken that. <laughs> Living across the street from it, um, I wasn't thinking about how can I make money on it. I was mm. more thinking about what would I like to have across the street for me. Right. Yeah. And my wife and I, back then, we were vegetarian. Actually, mm -hmm. I wasn't vegetarian. She, she was vegetarian. Um, and then I became vegetarian, and it was like, well, we're not going to open a place that serves meat if we're not, if we don't eat it, because sure. we want it for ourselves, right? So mm -hmm. it became a vegan, vegan. taco place. Yeah. We wanted to prove that you don't need meat to eat eat well mm. and and indulge. It smells good in here. It smells 
It smells, it doesn't smell like there isn't meat on the menu. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Do you ever have people come in and sit down and look at the menu and go, wait a second, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Do they, but they stay? Usually they stay. Sometimes they go. Sometimes they're just like, no. I know I wouldn't have tried it back when I was a big time meat eater. I would have been, my wife would have said, let's go there and eat. And I would have said, I don't want to go. And, uh, and I would have been wrong. <laughs> and we make everything from scratch, like to order. Yeah. So it, it takes time to do that. That's the thing, yeah. It's not, you don't have just big troughs of no. stuff that you're scooping onto plates. The bags you open and there it is, right? You have, we actually have to make yeah. it. Hey, Lucas. Hi. He's making the pico de gallo. Uh, so this is all we got to make everything? And it's literally all from scratch. Just the masa, so you make your tacos from that. You gotta press it on there. They go there. So, uh, Mark, that server over there is quite fetching. Do you know what her she's, story? She's married. She's married. Oh, that's tough. They're all taken. They're all taken. <laughs> she's actually she's actually married to me. Uh, Let me give you a smooch in the cheek. I love you. You're welcome, by the way. <laughs> My wife's brother gave us that for a wedding present. Did he paint it? Yeah. He's so good that we, we actually asked him for a big portrait of Bill Murray. We hung it in our living room for a while. It looked horrible there. Cause it's green. It's, it's got a weird color scheme, yeah. And the night before we opened this place, it was that big wall and there was this horrible uh, landscape. One of those sort of velvety things. You get a value village, like really, really ugly. Yeah, yeah. And that's what was hanging there and it was bothering me. Like that doesn't really work. I need something else. And I thought of the Bill Murray, went across the street. It was like 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> I walked it across Kathleen. I was the only one around. I hung it up and it's got a pink light bulb in that light there. Which what? Kind of a nice so it gives it a kind of hue. Yeah. So that's something you definitely don't see in any other neighborhood is, um, you know, a man crossing a street with a giant Bill Murray canvas at 10 yeah. o'clock at night. That's definitely yeah. something that you can't see in like the South End. Yeah, it was a real big hit too. I mean, yeah, people take their picture in front I can't, of them. I can't imagine that wall without it. No, I can't either. Who is Tuco? <laughs> Tuco, Tuco is the uh, is the ugly from the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Okay, that's the character. I mean, right. it's it's a name. It's, an uh, old it's, it's, a, it's a not a co most common ma name in Mexico, but yeah. it's a name. And is that his face? Is that that's, that's his that's, face? That's the character's face. Yeah, that's that's is his that face. A, I'm hoping we don't get caught with, that. with the trademark infringement. Yeah, or anything? the name is. It's not so much, uh, does it mean anything? It's, it's more a matter of, is it memorable? If it's silly enough that they'll remember it, yeah. well, it's worked. Especially a vegan taco restaurant that opened up in a KFC. Like, there's yeah. clearly a bit of, you know, yeah. there's a bit of fun there. Yeah, there's obviously it's a bit odd. of tongue in cheek. It's odd, right? Right, yeah. Um, and, and what about Cosmic Dave? Who's Cosmic Dave? Also came from a song. Okay. Yeah, that was a song a long time ago. Yeah. And it kind of was this character in my mind. Um, and, it's sort of this sort of dichotomy of this. It's, it's one of the like probably the second most common name in the English language, yeah, right? David. There's like so it's just kind of funny. John that Dave David. Is not cosmic. It's, <laughs> it, it's somehow I can picture this guy in my head, right? Okay. And that's kind of where it came from. Obviously, you're a musician, and uh, but but vinyl specifically. Why mm. vinyl specifically? Because that's what I like. Yeah, you find it sounds better. Um, Are you one of I those know. kind of just, purists, like just, audiophile purists? I just purists? like it. No, it's. I don't think it sounds. I mean, it probably does sound better. Do you want to see the cave? Yeah, I want to see okay. the cave. Do we want to see the cave? <laughs> Should I be scared of the cave? <laughs> All right, here we go. It's pretty dark. We're actually doing a sale tomorrow. A uh, free stuff sale. A free stuff sale? Yeah. So the sale is that everything's free? Yeah. It's going to go on the That's street. That's a good deal. It's going to go on the street. Oh, cool. We've done that before. We did a free cassette deck sale once. And it was like, it was funny because it was like, don't ask me any questions. Don't ask me if it works. No, <laughs> you can't it. try it. It's free. <laughs> Just take it. Get out of here. Take, take it, it all. These speakers are really cool, actually. Those aren't free, actually. They're not free. No, those, that's... Well, all right. Sorry, it's okay, this stuff. So this... Just you, this you stuff. you got to tape off that the section too. that's free. Well, it's like I said, it's... 
It's going to go on the street. It's going to go on the street. We're not selling it down here. All right. It tends to get all cluttered up this here. Is, yeah, like this is a funky kind of intimate little In the little winter, spot. it gets full of junk. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> because you can't put stuff on the street in right. the winter. This the is office. Like the green room for the yeah. uh, for the for the concert Our hall right there. We this share is those. Sweet too. Like, yeah. Those, see, those are my records. Yeah. Um, which is kind of nice to have them handy. And then this is the office. I mean, this is the workshop. So I asked you about all the other names. Beards. What's ah, beards? That's the weirdest one of okay. all. It's this sort of the the joke about you open a coffee place or especially a coffee place all the hipsters yeah, yeah. they all show I up thought with it their might laptops be a little, yeah. right <laughs> that's right coffee. all the beards with their laptops and it's the guys in the flat <laughs> i mean guys like me are really they show up and it's <laughs> yeah i mean and that was the joke with the no hipsters thing on the bottom <laughs> yeah. of the window i mean there was a a, a customer for tuco's a friend of mine from that comes to the record store as well he thought it'd be great to put that on the door right and he thought i would never do that <laughs> of course <laughs> It's, it's the craziest ideas are always the best yeah. ones, I think. So that's how that that happened. It's so. good that you can kind of be a little tongue in cheek about that. A little, you have some fun with that because I gotta say, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way or a pejorative way at all. But it is a bit of a hipster mecca down yeah, here. Like it's it's you know it's one of the coolest neighborhoods in Sudbury. It's gonna yeah. attract you know that kind so. of crowd. Yeah, right? I guess it is. And yeah, it's just funny that it turns out that way. Like I said, it's just stuff that I like. Sure. Yeah. I just wanted stuff that I live. I live there. Yeah. So, what would I really like to be close to? Yeah. And yeah. well, you're, this is it. This is it. So, what do you say to people who, you know, still have that that notion that the Donovan is not a safe place to be? Like, it's you know, what do you what do you say? How do you respond? How do you how do you encourage people to to kind of shake that image of this neighborhood? I don't neighborhood? really care. Okay. No, I don't really care. Yeah. I mean, as far as for me, it's more about just doing right. Yeah. Just do it. People can think whatever they want to think. Mm. If they feel like it's scary, they don't want to be here. It's like I said earlier, you know, part of me feels like I kind of like a little bit of that reputation. Yeah, right. It's kind of fun. Yeah. It, it's not dangerous. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't feel, I'm never scared walking down the street here. There's, there's always going to be neighborhoods in a city where uh, it's cheaper to live there. Right. Right? And part of that reputation helps that. Sure. It helps it keep yeah. it cheaper. Yeah. Right? Keeps, keeps rents yeah. down. It keeps so you end up with younger down. people, students, they yeah. coming in. Um, and that's where they're able to afford rental apartments, even buy a house mm -hmm. uh, in, in that neighborhood, where they wouldn't be able to afford it anywhere else. Yep. So it's helping people buy their own home, sure. right? And, and I mean, historically, it's a neighborhood of immigrants. And that's, and it's like still a, got a lot that spirit. of the kind of older neighborhoods in yeah. Sudbury, like the West End, and, yeah. you know, Flower Mill, those are all kind that's of right. historically immigrant working class sure. neighborhoods. And it was right? a mixed bag here. There's yeah. lots of different immig immigrants mm -hmm. from different places, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and everyone was welcome. Right. I mean, they'd fight in the street, but they were welcome. <laughs> but then they'd have a beer on the stoop yeah. afterwards and, and talk and about what a great fight it was. That's exactly. right. <laughs> yeah. I notice. I mean, you know, being inside all of these places, there is a real, you know, design sensibility. There's a real uh, kind of care to the to the yeah. look and feel of the place. Can you talk about that? Well, a little that's bit? the fun part. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's like I was saying about being creative right mm -hmm. it matters to me how it looks and how it presents yeah. and i put a lot of thought into it i used to play a lot of with lego a lot yeah sure so this yeah. is my chance to do it for real yeah i feel like if you if you have a building yeah why just paint it gray when you can paint it paint polka orange dots, and blue or polka polka you can dots. paint it purple yeah. or you can paint it yeah i just feel like you know, if you only get to own a couple of buildings and you get to choose what's going to go on it, mm. why not? Life's short, you know? Is this is a grand like, plan? Is this an empire? No. Are you building an empire down here on Kathleen it was Street? An, if, if it is, it's, it's, it's an accidental okay. empire. Yeah. Um, no, it, I think, if anything, it's maybe becoming a bit of an addiction mm -hmm. because it's fun. It's really fun. It's a good way to put it. I used to make records, mm -hmm. and now, I get to actually create tangible things like this, yeah. um, which I used to have a lot of fun making records, right. but, but this is way more fun. <laughs> this is way more fun. And it's, it, it's a, so it's a creative outlet, yeah. it's a creative process that's, that I'm doing that's, that's, that really is not driven by, I'm not trying to create businesses, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to create some kind of 
artistic project. Living, right? Living and kind of projects, when people come yeah. and spend their money, it keeps it going and it makes me right. happy because it's working. They're patrons. You know? They're not yeah, uh, exactly. They're not customers. That's right. Almost. And I, you know, when I wake up in the morning and I have to run over there and check things and yeah. um, go out, restock things are here, just yeah. make sure everything's. I'm. It's more like um, I'm nervous because we're gonna have lots of guests coming to the house kind of thing. Okay. We're not prepared, yeah. right? <laughs> they're, they're not going to be happy. Vacuumed. We need to make sure that we're ready for them when right. they come. All right, that brings us to the end of another episode of Subbury.com's Person of Interest. Thank you so much to Mark Browning for taking the time to chat with us about his little mini Brooklyn down here on Kathleen Street. And thank you so much for watching. Now, if you have an idea for a person of interest, get in touch with me by email or by Twitter. And check back to Subbury.com in the coming weeks for more brand new episodes of Person of Interest. For Subbury.com, I'm Callum Rodeo.